welcome everyone to a new series that I call Frying Comments. Now, some of my older viewers will remember that years ago, I made a few videos thumping some hapless goobers in my comment section. And needless to say, this video is not that. All of you have probably seen your fair share of comment response videos on YouTube where big and proud YouTubers sarcastically mock the utter peons beneath them as the slime between their toes. This video is not that. Oh no, I'm not flying over anyone's heads here. All of you who watch me know that my spiral only points in one direction, and that's down, 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 which is exactly where I'm going today. Because in this series, we're not dealing with your average, everyday criticism. This is advanced criticism. Today we are sinking to depths that no channel of my size should ever reach. We are reaching levels of pettiness that shouldn't even be possible. Today we aren't just glazing over an eclectic compilation of posts as you may expect from a video like this. Rather, we are going to examine just a single comment, posted over a year ago, that nobody cares about. Nobody besides me. hopping onto whatever bandwagon you can to try and get as many views as possible and spread your unfunny shit. It's a shame your fanbase can't see past this. The commenter here assumes that I'm trend hopping based on my video's trendy subject matter. While I would disagree with this claim, the important aspect here is what would lead someone to make this claim. Looking at my channel now, seeing me make videos about Dale Earnhardt, court cases, and Leafy more than a year after people stopped watching him, it's pretty obvious that I'm not quite the trendiest YouTube channel. But at the time this comment was posted, this was actually a much more reasonable claim, considering the era that preceded it. Those of you who are new to the channel may not actually know this, but I used to make YouTube poops. For the first five years of this channel, all I did was make YouTube poops, a time period which constitutes the primary focus of this video. Let's find out why. The YTP community has seen so many amazing and talented people leave the community, or simply stop making videos, for various reasons. Why the fuck are we stuck with you? I've never really had a good relationship with the YTP community. For the longest time, I was totally isolated. I never talked to anybody. All I really did was watch and listen. I can't really say for sure what exactly I did to get on people's nerves. But I can make an educated guess. Now, the idea of drama in the YTP community may seem shocking and counterintuitive to many of you, but believe me, it exists. Dude, you are a little boy who has nothing better to do but to upload crap, and that's keeping it real. How could such silly videos lead to such bitterness and resentment? I can't really explain it. I guess it's like any other online community where some people are loved and some people are hated. And more often than not, I tend to fall on the side of the hated. Maybe it's because I didn't talk enough. Maybe it's because I talked too much. No one has ever given me a comprehensive explanation, so the best I can do is speculate. That's all I've been able to do for all this time. Maybe this comment can lead me to some answers. Your fans are a bunch of easily amused fucking idiots who find shitty content creators like you entertaining. The only reason you even had a large number of subs in the first place is because of those Pixar YTPs you made, which were pretty fucking shit to begin with. Your actual non-Pixar content wasn't earning you many subs. The sentiment here is pretty clear. My YTPs are more popular than they deserve to be, and I don't necessarily disagree with that. In mid-2013, I had less than 4,000 subscribers, and then I uploaded The Uncredibles, a video that changed everything. It was my first video to reach a million views, and the popularity of this video carried over to six of my next YTPs, which would also pass a million views. To this day, nearly six years later, more people have watched The Uncredibles than any other video on my channel. So did I make these videos with the intent of getting popular on YouTube? Well, no, but I can understand why people may think that. The source material is very common and accessible, consisting of Spongebob and Pixar movies, which contrasts heavily with the more obscure sources of older YTPs. 
Looking at this aspect, one could infer that I specifically chose these sources with the intent of getting lots of views. In reality, The Uncredibles was only just supposed to be the next video in line and nothing else. The fact that it, among these other videos, got so popular had to do more with the audience selectively preferring the source material because it was so accessible. The reason I chose these sources in the first place was because I watched them a lot as a kid and I wanted to remix them. Not because I wanted more people to watch them. A lot of people also seem to miss that during this time I didn't exclusively upload what you'd call trendy sources, and consequently those videos received far less views. None of this was ever by design on my end. To put it simply, if I was in the business of getting views, I probably wouldn't have spent five straight years making YouTube poops. In the vast majority of cases, YTPs don't get many views. So when my YTPs all of a sudden started getting many, many views, I and a lot of other people didn't know how to react. I started 2013 getting a few thousand views on my videos and I ended 2014 getting millions. Did my videos get a thousand percent more entertaining? Was I putting in a thousand percent more effort? No, obviously not. Personally, I thought I was making them about the same as all my older videos. But with that being said, my sudden meteoric rise in popularity was met with skepticism by a lot of people in the YTP community. And a lot of people were beginning to sense a great inequity between the views I got and the views they thought I deserved. I began to notice it sometime in the spring of 2014, after uploading my second Incredibles video, The Non-Credibles. On this video I received comments from two other well-known YouTube poopers, Hurricoaster and Chemistry Guy. I remember both of these comments offering some shockingly blunt criticism of what they perceived as a change in my style. Each delivered with the implication that I had sold out to a more mainstream audience. At the time, I found these comments very discouraging. How these two poopers whom I admired and respected were utterly disappointed in how I had changed. The problem was that I didn't think I had changed. I figured my process with this video had been the same as it was years ago when I had made videos that they supposedly enjoyed. The only real difference in my mind was that now I was popular, while then I was a nobody. Clearly, the notion that these guys were disappointed implies that at one time they had high expectations of me, and the fact that they decided to critique me directly indicates that they only had my best interests in mind. I still respect both of these guys, and both of them still leave comments on my stuff every now and then, but these two comments left on this video really bothered me, mostly because I could never reconcile their newfound perception of me. Over time, I could really only conclude that they disliked my videos because they were popular, and I reinforced this idea about a year later in the spring of 2015. Yeah. Let's get right down to the nitty gritty and talk about your tube food. All you suckers that come from your tube, I'll dance and spray ass like a roach. I had uploaded Deep Frying Nemo, the final installment of my quest to remix the entirety of Finding Nemo. The Frying Nemo saga spanned eight months and four videos the last of which represented the most effort I had ever put into a video at that point. There used to be this YTP forum called Yuchu where I spent a lot of time lurking. I tried to make an account there once, but they never sent me the email to confirm my account, so I took it as a sign to forever remain a lurker, and lurk I did. The day I uploaded Deep Frying Nemo, I saw an unusual amount of backlash about it on Yuchu. Now, of course everyone is entitled to their opinions, and in hindsight, I actually agree with what a lot of them have to say, but for a forum where everyone tends to act aloof and disinterested, there were certainly a lot of people going out of their way to critique my video. It wasn't the content of the criticism that bothered me, rather the quantity of people coming out of the woodwork to express their dissatisfaction with me, a guy who never posted anything or interacted with anyone on the forum. Why did they care so much? Why did I care so much about what they had to say? Why do I care so much about what this guy has to say? I started making YTPs way back in 2010. I was just a kid at the time and it seemed like a fun hobby to get into. At this time I had no idea what I was doing and basically did whatever impulsively came to my mind, but for some reason a lot of people started watching my videos. Really influential poopers like Barney is Perverted and Link on Drugs became fans of me, a 13 year old who was still trying to figure out the basic functions of my editing software. Of course they didn't know that, nobody did, 
but it didn't matter because I was getting moderate popularity regardless. I'll always remember when one day I went from less than 10 subscribers to over 100. A measly amount compared to my standards today, but at the time I considered it my single greatest accomplishment, not just in YouTube, but in life. For years growing up, my YouTube channel was the one single thing I was truly proud of, and YTP became one of the only defining traits of my identity. So maybe that's why I started taking it so seriously. Maybe serious is the wrong word, but around the time of the Pixar poops, I certainly started trying harder. I started making longer videos with more intensive editing, and I kept getting rewarded with wild popularity in my genre. But after getting so many views and subscribers, I really only cared about one thing. Respect. I tried to be gracious and humble in the wake of my success. I hosted several collabs to try to showcase the talent of lesser known poopers. I made two videos in which I tried sharing my success with other poopers whom I thought deserved it. I gave over 30 shoutouts and recommendations to my newfound audience. One of those shoutouts going to a guy called Stuart K. Riley, who was perhaps my favorite pooper at the time. Stu was an old school guy who was very influential in innovating the genre to a more modern style, and he was one of the leading contributors to the YouTube forums. But most notably, Stu was a guy who ran a series called YTP News, a series that taught me more about YTP than any other source. Without YTP News, it's doubtful that I'd be making any videos today. I remember watching one episode where Stu spent about 16 minutes ranting about a guy called Waxinator, a pooper he deemed overrated, pandering, and not representative of what YTP should be. And I remember thinking at the time, yeah, screw Waxinator. Why does he have what other people deserve? Well, it turned out that a few years later, I was the new Waxinator. I was the one getting called overrated and pandering. Ironically, people respected me more when I had no viewers and no idea what I was doing. When I started getting popular, I lost the only thing that I would end up caring about. YouTube Poop originated as a way to mock and deride traditional media through remixing and editing. It is counterculture by its very nature, and it's always meant to rally against some kind of establishment. Paradoxically, popular YouTube poopers can never be truly respected, because when you enter the mainstream, you become the establishment. That is the main reason why I believe I became hated in the YTP community. The only problem being I didn't choose to get popular. YTP was always just a hobby for me. For more than five years, I got millions of views and didn't make a cent of revenue off of it because simply creating the videos was rewarding enough for me. I didn't really care about the power or the clout or the influence because I never really saw myself as an influential person. I was just making funny edits for fun and everyone else was welcome to come along for the ride. There was never a point when I decided to sell out and become the establishment. It just sort of happened based on factors out of my control. And there came a point during the production of Deep Frying Nemo when I decided that I wanted to go back. I wanted to return to the old days when nobody knew about me and YTP was still fun and experimental and adventurous. This desire is what led me to eventually create Green Simpsons and although I really had fun making it, I suspected deep down that things would never be the same. What? You've gotten complaints? Complaints? I can handle. What? You've gotten complaints? 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 I can handle. Complaints? 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 I can, I can complaints? handle. What I can't handle is complaints. The part of my audience that didn't immediately stop watching then and there started complaining about the video much in the same way that YouTube had done years before. And I had had enough. I never signed up to be lectured and ridiculed over a voluntary hobby of mine that was supposed to be fun. So I lashed out at them. My very own audience. In my mind, they were the ones who took away my enjoyment of YTP. And they were the ones who prevented me from earning the respect I deserved. I was finally going to do what Hurricoaster and Chemistry Guy and the YouTube forums told me I should have been doing and make videos that I wanted. I even changed my YouTube username to signify the beginning of a new era. But that didn't change anything. I still saw my new videos getting backlash on YouTube and at the center of it all was good old Stuart K. Riley. All I wanted was to help you. I only wanted to help! And what did you say to me? 
I think Lemon has been on a downward spiral mentally and now he's lost it completely. It tore me apart. But I learned an important lesson. You can't count on anyone, especially your heroes. I was wrong to treat you that way. I'm sorry. See? Now you respect me because I'm a threat. I'll give them downward spiral. I'll give them the most spectacular downward spiral anyone's ever seen. And this right here was the origin of the downward spiral. I had moved beyond salvaging anything on my channel at this point. I had given up everything, the support of thousands of fans to chase the respect I wanted. And at this moment, it dawned on me that I would never, ever get it. Over the past three years, I had witnessed my fun hobby become completely soiled with bitterness, resentment, and complaints. So, so many complaints. The only thing left for me to do was complain back. And when I'm old and I've had my fun, I'll sell my spiral so that everyone can be downward. Everyone can complain. And when everyone's on a downward spiral, <laughs> no one will be. I started by publishing a 12 page document complaining about Yuchu and their mistreatment of popular YouTube poopers. I complained about how they had become the true establishment of the YTP community. I complained about how Stuart K. Riley ruined everything and created the downward spiral. Then I turned around to my YouTube channel and complained about politics, complained about high school, complained about people complaining about me complaining, then complained about people complaining about me responding to their complaints. All this new complaining didn't leave much room for YouTube poops, and eventually I stopped making them. There was never a goodbye. I never planned a finale. Most poopers go out this way. You never even know they're gone until you stumble upon their channel one day and they haven't uploaded in years. Most poopers leave gracefully and are remembered fondly, which is what this comment was alluding to at the beginning. Not me though. I was hated for leaving according to this comment and I was hated for staying according to this comment. I find it rather fitting that I left YTP in the same way I entered. Alone, not respected, with nobody watching. After more than seven years of service, that's my legacy. I keep this comment around because it's a testament to that. Luckily for me, I guess I was good enough at complaining to get a second chance on YouTube. And more people watch me now than ever did when I made YTPs. Complaining sort of replaced YTP as my new identity. The hate never went away and I didn't really expect it to. I think that became part of my identity too. At least now I get hated for valid reasons as opposed to not being good enough at making goofy edits of kids shows. How did things get so bad between us? This comment is just so bitter on an oddly personal level. I know this is also the guy who ran the EL Fan YTP Troll account, a channel single-handedly dedicated to hating me for more than two years. They finally got bored of me not responding and closed the channel at the end of last year. Keep in mind, I have never talked to this person before in my entire life. I think this person also started a Discord server of other YouTube poopers who hate me and they carried on the legacy with this imposter Vidly account that still produces content to this day. I haven't uploaded a YTP since 2017. It astounds me how even today, the biggest source of bitterness and resentment towards me comes, still, from the YTP community. A group of people who supposedly makes comedy videos for fun. I tweeted this out as a reply to Da Things, a YouTube pooper who publicly chastised me for making an edgy joke. He later apologized. Other YouTube poopers like Attack of the Hank and good old Stu still take jabs at me despite us having absolutely no connection other than a loose genre video we used to make. I don't need anyone's apology. I don't need anyone's sympathy. I'm not a victim here. But if you can find any former YouTube pooper out there who gets repeatedly hated as much as I do, I'd be happy to hear about them. I understand that I bring a lot of it on myself. I definitely regret a lot of the stuff I said in the past. I started a whole melodramatic thread after this demanding an explanation from the YTP community. And like I said at the beginning of this video, no one was able to give me a comprehensive explanation. So the best I can still do is speculate. A lot of people ask me why I make this issue about the YTP community as a whole. I don't really even know how to define the YTP community anymore. It doesn't mean Yuchu because the site shut down last year long after I and a lot of other people stopped caring about it. 
What remains of the community has either moved on to new frontiers or spread themselves out among a dozen or so micro-communities. I guess I've always felt it's been me against everyone else, and even when it ain't so, I have a knack of running my mouth and turning the community against me regardless. Here I am making a video about it, making the problem exponentially worse. Don't try to go hunt down any of the people in this video, by the way. This isn't about the people. I only care about the ideas. Maybe the reason I care so much about this is that I'm trying my hardest to justify the purpose of the first five and a half years I spent on this website. I mean, yeah, I use the skills and audience I gained during the YouTube poop era to transition to greener pastures today. I learn from my mistakes in the past and I work towards not repeating them. And now I'm doing the best I've ever been on YouTube. Ironically, I became more respected by the greater YouTube community than I ever was by the YTP community. Emperor Lemon posted this on Twitter. It raises the question of why I didn't leave sooner. I don't necessarily think it's fair to throw out a bunch of what ifs. I think I am where I am today because of the very specific chain of events that preceded it. I certainly don't think I would be nearly as successful if it weren't for my experiences making YouTube poops, both positive and negative. However, I'd like to think it mattered more than just a simple stepping stone to the next frontier. I'd like to believe the whole thing wasn't just a big waste of time. I will say that if I had never had a major breakthrough while making YouTube poops, I would almost certainly have quit YouTube by now. I have an alt account called Emperor Lime where I upload 30 second long shit posts a few times a year that only get a few thousand views each. I imagine that's what my channel would be today if I never got popular through YTPs and I'd probably be making a living doing some boring engineering shit. I guess all the videos you see on my channel today are only possible because of my struggles in YTP. For what it's worth, that's something. I don't know how many more years it'll be before the community can just let me ride off into the sunset. I've cried and whined and bitched about sour grapes for long enough. The best outcome I can hope for at this point is for everyone to just forget about me and leave me to my own accord. I'm sure this video won't be doing me any favors there, but at least the few of you out there who actually care about any of this can hear my side of the story. Maybe this whole time it's been my fault for expecting everyone to reach out to me when all along I should have been the one making an effort to reach out to them. So I did a little digging and found the guy who commented this, and I reached out to him. It turns out he doesn't feel the same way anymore, and he actually regrets how he acted. He apologized to me multiple times and I accepted it. So then, was this video completely pointless? A shameless, petty expose on some guy's hate comment that doesn't even reflect his current views? Well, not entirely. You know, it's not often that you get to have an honest, relaxed conversation with one of your biggest haters. So I asked him why I was so hated. And for the first time ever, I got a satisfying answer. I guess that's all I really wanted at this point. We ended the conversation on good terms. It just goes to show that if you play your cards right, you can win over even your most passionate haters. I just wish I had realized that a little sooner. Will Emperor Lemon ever poop again? Most likely not. It amazes me that there are some people out there in my audience still anticipating a new YTP. I've certainly thought about it before, even thrown around a few ideas in editing software, but every time I try, I just don't have the motivation to continue. YTP just isn't fun for me anymore. I mean, just look at this video. I've been talking about YouTube poop for about half an hour, and I don't think I've told a single joke. It's like I can't even have fun talking about this stuff anymore. But hey, the only thing that's for sure about Implemon is nothing's for sure. I'm on to the next adventure now, where once again, I'm just a new guy with everything to prove. So if you take one thing away from this video, it's that hate is temporary, but YouTube comments are forever. You know, making this video really took me back to the beginning of the downward spiral, the summer of 2016, a simpler time of YouTube drama, Vine compilations, and Harambe, and a time when I was very uncertain about the future of this YouTube channel. 
I was starting my first semester of college and I was really struggling to figure out what to do on YouTube anymore. I had over 100,000 subscribers at this time, but most of them had stopped watching and I was losing subscribers with every upload. They had stopped caring, I had stopped caring, and with each video I was finding less and less motivation to continue. There came a time when I contemplated abandoning this channel entirely to focus on, gasp, a real job. But then sometime during my first semester of college, I hit a really rough patch in my life and I said to myself, you know what? I'm probably never going to get another chance at this YouTube thing, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend the next few years putting in the effort to make my YouTube channel great again. And by the time I graduate, I'd be able to decide if it was worth it to continue. Well, I should be graduating at the end of this year, and I have to say, I'm making enough now where the full-time YouTube dream just might be feasible. And this is due in large part to the wonderful sponsors I've been able to pick up over the past year. Which brings me to the sponsor for today's video. Zelda, my Minecraft account has been hacked by the evil forces of Ganon. I'm going to log into my recovery email to get my account back. But father, what if you forgot your recovery password? Oh ship. Gee, I just wonder if there's an affordable online service that could have easily solved both of these problems. This video is brought to you by Dashlane. If this video taught you anything, it's that I tend to make a lot of enemies online. And if you have a lot of enemies, it's probably a good idea to invest in some security. Password security. Dashlane is not just a password protection manager. It's also downward spiral insurance. One of the fastest ways of falling into the downward spiral is having your accounts hacked and seized by some dude you trolled on a message board years ago, all because you thought password one was secure. That's the stupidest combination I ever heard in my life! Oh, you stupid son of a- Stop worrying about passwords and let Dashlane do it for you. Dashlane Autofill makes logging into any website incredibly safe and easy. Just click login and Dashlane will do the rest. Forgetting your password? Well then let Dashlane generate a secure password on new accounts that you'll never have to remember. Dashlane does it all for you so you can log in with a single click every time. Not secure enough? Then try Dashlane's incredible VPN service which encrypts your data at the push of a button. Move your IP across the globe to access region-locked content. So download Dashlane today for all of your devices so that you can be safe 24-7. And visit dashlane.com slash emplemon to try your first device free. And save on Dashlane Premium across all your devices by using the promo code emplemon to get a discount for your first year. And never worry about passwords again. You see, last summer I began the era of my YouTube life cycle that you all know was the downward spiral. And every step of the way I have faced resistance, backlash, and naysayers. Everyone thought they knew what was good for my channel. Nobody understood the downward spiral. And everybody questioned it. You all questioned me. You all questioned my motives. You all questioned my goals. But most importantly, you questioned why the Simpsons were green. All I wanted to do was make green Simpsons videos, but you people had to ruin it by complaining. So you know what? No, I become the one who complains. I complain here, I complain there, I complain everywhere. All I ever do is complain. I complain about Frying Dory, and you complain back, so I complain even harder. And now Frying Dory is an afterthought, just as it should have been all along. And it's funny to me, because you all considered me an afterthought. You all wrote me off. You all left this channel for dead. You put me on the downward spiral. So you know what I did? I wrote that shit. I took the ball you people gave me and fucking ran with it. Because when you're in a downward spiral, there's no escaping it. So you might as well aim for the bottom. Attention. Head on over to PewDiePie's YouTube channel, press the subscribe button, and please persuade everyone you know to also subscribe to PewDiePie as well.